Hi, welcome to Flutter Monk. We are starting to a new series where we will create login application. So let's get started. As a first step, I have created login application and then deleted all the unnecessary codes. I have main method, which is necessary. And also I have my app class. Inside of my app class, now I can define the home page of my application. And the home page, which is landing screen of our application, is going to be login screen. That's why inside of lib folder, I will be creating screens folder. And inside of screens folder, I will create login screen. Then I will create stateless widget. So stateless widget, I will name it login screen. Lastly, I will take this screen and use it as my home page. Then I just need to import it from login screen.dart file. So let's start to set up our login screen. First of all, I will return scaffold. And inside of scaffold, I will define app bar. Inside of app bar, we can define title just like this. I will name it login screen. We need to get rid of this constant value, use it for the text widget. Then after the app bar, we can define the body of our application. Currently, let's just say center. Inside of the center, I will define a text widget and inside of it, I will say login screen. And that's how our login screen look like, but we're gonna change it because in order to log in, we need to text form fields and also we need elevated button where we can submit our form. But before doing this, I will take this my app and put it inside of separate file. So inside of lib folder, I will create app.dart file and I will put my app inside of app.dart. Then I just need to import this stateless widget from material dart. Also, I have to import this login screen. Inside of main dart, we will get error because my app is not recognized. We just need to import it from app dart. Also, we can delete this import statement, which is useless. Let's get back to login screen. And instead of the center widget, we will apply column. So here we can define a column. And inside of the column, we can define the children. We can define a text widget. Inside of it, we can put login as a title. Then as a second widget, I will be using form. And inside of it, I will define the column. Inside of the column, we will define two text form fields. So text form field. This is the first one. Also, I will define the second one. Then we can use the constant for this text widget. So let's see how is that going to look like. That's how we will get our text form fields. And after this form field, let's put elevated button where we're going to use it to submit our form. As a on press property, I will be using this syntax, but then we're going to change it. As a child widget, I will be using text. And I will just say submit, or maybe we can say log in. We can use the constant value for this text, and that's it. Let's hot reload, and that's how our screen will look like. Actually, I want to center all this content. That's why inside of the column, there is main axis alignment property. So we can use main axis alignment.center, which is going to center our content. In this tutorials, we will mainly focus on the logic of our application. That's why we can keep design of our application very simple. Then, for example, for the text form field, we can use some properties. First of all, I want to get rid of this underlined border. That's why here there is a decoration property for the text form field, which I can use. For the decoration, we can use input decoration. And inside of it, there is border. So for the border, 
I will be using outlined input border. Then we can define border radius. We can use border radius dot circular. And as a circular radius, we can define 10, for example. Now let's check what is going to happen. As you see, we get rid of this underlined border. Then we can apply the same thing for the second input decoration. We can put it inside of second text form field. Now we're going to get the same result for the second text form field. We can apply some padding for these text form fields. So these text form fields are inside of the column, which means we can apply padding for this column. Here we can, for example, define 12. Now let's see what's going to happen. Between these text form fields, we can define size box. And as a height property, we can define 10, for example. We can use additionally constant. So the first text form field is going to be email, and the second one is going to be password. For that purpose, for the second text form field, we can use obscure text and we can make it true. That's very important for the password fields. Actually, inside the first text form field, we can use hint text for the user experience. Inside of input decoration, there is a property called hint text, and we can say, please enter your email. Also, for the second text form field, we can apply hint text, and we can say, please enter your password. If you need it, you can actually use hint style and you can decrease the font size of the hint text. So I will be using text style or the hint style and inside of it, we can define the font size maybe 12. Same for the second text form field, we can use this hint style and now I think it's gonna be better. So for the login screen, we can actually keep it simple because we're gonna focus more on the logic of this application. 